Right, so we're going to be studying today properties of logarithms. This is one of my favorite sections that we do. Um, but I need to first review the concept of common log. And a common log is a log base 10. And we abbreviate it by just calling it log. We also have something that's called the natural log, which is log base e. Now that e is a number, it's on your calculator, it's actually right here above the division sign. You learned to use it in the PERT formula that um, you should have done in Algebra 2, which is a compound interest formula. And um, it's a number that's approximately equal to 2.71828, kind of like pi is approximately 3.14, um, e is approximately 2.71828. So, and the way we abbreviate log base E, we just say ln, that means natural log. All right, so let's look at our um, properties of logarithms. The logarithm of 1. So in other words, log base B of 1 is simply going to be 0. And that's because B to the 0 equals 1. So it makes sense b to the 0 is 1. So the log of 1 is always 0. No matter what the base is, it can be any base. Logarithm of the base. Log base b of b is simply going to be 1. And that's because b to the first is b. So if these match, then you just get 1. So log base 10 of 10 is 10. Log base 12 of 12 is 1. Log base 50 of 50 is 1, because if the base and the answer are the same, it must have just been raised to the first power. Logarithm of the power of the base. So log base b of b to the n is going to be n, because b to the n equals b to the n. b to the n equals b to the n. All right, let's go to logarithm of a product. Log base b of x times y equals log base b of x plus log base b of y. Because, remember, these answers that we get are exponents, and when you multiply, with the same base, you add the exponents. So when, whenever we're doing problems with properties of logarithms, we say that if it's written where it's um, together or condensed, it's all condensed in one, then we want to expand it. If it's expanded, then we usually want to condense it. Kind of like with um, exponents and radicals. If it's in radical form, write it in exponent form. If it's in exponent form, write it in radical form. If it's condensed, expand. If it's expanded, condense. Logarithm of a quotient is going to be log base b of x minus log base b of y. Because when you divide with exponents, remember you subtract, you multiply, you add, you divide, you subtract. Logarithm of a power. Log base b of x to the m. Remember, power to a power, we multiply. So that becomes m times log base b of x. So that exponent becomes a multiplier, and it just gets moved to the front. So if it's written with the um, exponent here, then we're going to put the multiplier in front. If it's written like this, we're going to then put this up here and write it in exponential form. Whichever way it's written, typically the question will ask you to write it the other way. All right, let's look at number one. Number one says evaluate the log of 250 plus the log of 4 without a calculator. Now, notice it just says log, which means it's log base 10. So we have log base 10 of 250 plus 
log base 10 of 4. Now notice they have the same base. So since they have the same base, we can write it as log base 10. Since it's written in addition, we can, um, so it's expanded right now, we're going to condense it to 250 times 4. So we get log base 10 of 1,000. So 10 to some power equals 1,000. So I know that x has to equal 3, because 10 to the third is 1,000. I wouldn't have been able to do that um, without a calculator if I hadn't applied my rule. So here it was expanded, so I condensed it, and then it became a problem that I could solve. Let's look at number 2. Um, number 2 also looks like it is expanded right now. Um, write the expression without logarithms, which means somehow in the end we're going to be able to simplify this that we don't even have to have um, any logarithms. So I didn't realize that wasn't straight. Alright, so um, I can't really do anything here, so I've got the natural log of p. This multiplier, notice when I have a multiplier, I can move it up to the exponent, equals the natural log of t to the one half and minus the natural log of 6. So the first thing I did was I moved this multiplier to there and made it an exponent. Now I have subtraction. Notice subtraction I can rewrite as division. So I have the natural log of p equals the natural log of t to the 1 half divided by 6. Okay. Now, since it's the natural log of each side, I can then simply just say that p must equal t to the 1 half divided by 6. And therefore, that is the square root of t divided by 6. And look at that, I wrote it without logarithms. Right, let's keep going. Let's do the next one. Um, write, rewrite each logarithm as a single number. So these are expanded like this, and we are going to condense them. Addition means multiplication. Subtraction means division. So I would have the natural log of 14 times 2 divided by 7. Sorry, I should have that 7 incorrectly. So I get the natural log 14 times 2 is 28, 28 divided by 7 is 4. And there's my final answer. Alright, letter B. First thing I do is I always move those multipliers and make those exponents. So I have log of 1 half squared plus log of 3 fifths to the fifth power. Okay. So I have log of one fourth plus log of, let's see, three to the fifth power. I need a calculator for that. Three to the fifth power. That would be 243. Five to the fifth power over did I write that in wrong? No. 3,125. Okay. Now that I've taken care of my exponents, this addition means multiplication. So log of 1 fourth times 243 over 3,125. So let's see what I get for that. I'm going to use my calculator. One fourth times 243 over 3125. Oh, I didn't write times. I hit minus. I did not mean to do that. One fourth times 243 divided by 3125. 
So I'm multiplying this fraction times this fraction. And then we do math, enter, enter. And it's not giving me my reduce, so I'm thinking what I'm going to need to do is just write, well, it's an exact decimal. I really should write it as a fraction. 4 times 3,125. There we go. As a single number, so it'll be the log. Yeah. Okay, so since it gave me a decimal, um, we would rather it look like these. So that's why I just went ahead and got 243 over 125,000. Not sure why the cat, I guess the, it wouldn't reduce it or give me that fraction. This time for number four. It wants me to take the condensed version, and it wants me to expand it. So, so this is log base 4 of 5x squared y. That means log base 4 of 5 plus log base 4 of x squared plus log base 4 of y. Because multiplication means addition. I look, there's no exponent here, so I can just leave that one. This exponent can move to here, so plus 2 log base 4 of x. This does not have an exponent. So just write log base 4 of y. Let's go on to letter B. Letter B, um, I've got division. I remember that division means subtraction log base 2 of 32 plus log base 2 of x, there's the multiplication, then the division, log base 2 of y. And then I check, since this is all numbers, I know what the answer to this is, because this right here means um, 2, to what power is 32? And it's 2 to the 5th. So this is just 5 plus log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of y. So whenever I can simplify, I do. Not sure if we're going to be able to get through these last two. We'll see how we can do before the, we have to go into the next video. We need to use the fact that the log of 3 is 0.477, which means I need to somehow have this rewritten where I just say log of 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start rewriting this. I know that this is the log of 3 to the 1 third power because we learned the very first unit that radicals can be written with exponents. Then we learned that this exponent can get moved to the front. So I have one third times the log of three. Well, and I know what the log of three is. The log of three is 0.477. So I get let's keep one third, I guess I'll go up to here, one third times 0.477. So I get 0.477 over 3. And I can leave that as my answer. Alright, let's see if we can do this last one. This is going to be the log of 300 to the 1 third, which is going to be 1 third times the log of 3. Well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to rewrite this 300 as 3 times 100. And then I'm going to move this to the front. And I get 1 third times the log of 3 plus 1 third times the log of 100. Because when I move this 1 third to the front, it, remember, this applies to both. Um, maybe, I feel like I'm trying to hurry to get this one in. 
I'm just going to do this one on the next.